But up next, the great Chris Mortensen is with us now from ESPN. More welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I am doing well, guys. I was going to dress up for you, but I said, eh, <laughs> this will be good enough. No, this if, is dressed up. If you're having any us. problems with the connection, let me know. No, we're good. We're good. Uh, of course, Mort is with us on the Pepsi Hotline. That one last night, Mort, almost saw NFL history, and I, I'm just one of those guys that loves the craziness of the game. Uh, that would have gone really, really badly, I'm assuming, for Mike Zimmer had his team not somehow held on at the end there. I think that's a fair statement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, what's funny is that they, they were dominating the game in such a fashion and Dalvin Cook obviously was having a, a huge night. That there were people on social media. It was brought to my attention because I really don't turn on Twitter during the game. That uh, a former NFL executive was really ripping Mike Zimmer for why was Dalvin Cook still in the game in the early third quarter? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, the game still got almost half the game left to play, and. Given the Vikings' history this year of finding a way to make things game close, that's a really dumb statement. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was a reason when Dalvin Cook was still playing. Those games aren't over. And you know, it was funny, earlier in the week, like Ben Roethlisberger, I'm not a fan of Thursday Night Football. I, nobody is a fan, if you're a player or coach, of Thursday Night Football because these guys are barely recovered from the week before. But we as fans and media people, we love having something to watch on a Thursday night, right? Right. And so it was interesting that early in the week, Ben Roethlisberger noted that he doesn't even practice until Fridays. Huh. And I'm thinking, watching that first half saying, well, that's, that's proven right so far. And then all of a sudden, the second half, he's doing pretty darn well, and they're catching it pretty darn well. And Najee, Najee Harris, says, you know, uh, became a factor, especially in that fourth quarter. Hey, Mort, I know both of these teams are still in the postseason mix, but Cleveland sitting at 6-6, six and six, Buffalo at 7-5. and five. A lot of people before the season thought that could be an AFC championship game matchup. Who's been more disappointing, the Bills at 7-5 and five or the Browns at 6-6? Six and six? Uh, I always – I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I'm not sure because, first of all, we still have a lot of season left to go. Uh, the other thing is uh, – I did listen. I heard from so many coaches, and especially defensive coaches, who felt there was going to be a huge gap made this year in just the way the games are played. Last year was seemed like unfettered offense, and the reason why is there was a pandemic, so there was no off season, there was no OTAs, there was no real training camp, there was no preseason, so you couldn't really prepare based off the previous year's film. As you might this year, they had they had all those things. They were back, so they actually thought scoring was going to be down. Uh, you know, we'd we'd make our adjustments, and so the Bills. You know, listen, the Bills can't lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let me put it that way. They should have beaten the Steelers in the opener, so they're probably a little more disappointing. Uh, and I think the other night against the uh, Patriots, they made a mistake. Uh, obviously, their defense uh, didn't stop the run, but listen, Josh Allen is such a force. You just just go let him win the game, you know. Let him let him let him be himself. Because as Sean McDermott, the Bills coach himself, pointed out, you know, you 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 fix your the physicality of what you do on offense and defense in training camp. You can't do it in in, in December. And Josh Allen is the one superstar that they truly have, along with Stephon Diggs. And I thought, if anything, yeah. And by the way, the wind is even worse than what you imagined it was. Yeah. And. Uh, and it did affect flight of ball and, and, and all those things. But I think that the Bills should have just said, hey, Josh, you go win it or lose it for us. I would have put it more on his shoulders, both with his arm and his legs. Uh, so I think the Bills a little more disappointing, but I think they have shown signs that you can run the ball on them. The Titans ran the ball on them. The Colts ran the ball on them. So I think they need to change some of their body type uh, in terms of what they, what they have uh, in, in the trenches. And then, uh, so I'm not sure which is more disappointing. I'm more anxious to see what the Bills and Bucks do this week because, you know, the uh, the uh, the Buccaneers. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it's okay. Uh, we, phone call. Uh, we we expect that from Buccaneers, you. Tom Brady, Tom Brady has more has more uh, weapons than he's ever had. 
the Bills lost their best defensive player in Tredavious White, one of the best cover corners, two weeks ago. It didn't affect them in the Patriots game because, as you know, the Patriots didn't throw the ball. It will affect the Bills negatively in this game, I presume. However, the Bills, the Tampa Bay secondary is their weak point. So I can see this being a shootout. And, and, and this game will tell me a lot about the Bills. They got to have a bounce back week. They haven't lost two in a row. Uh, Cleveland, listen, I think they've had injuries. Uh, it's a tough division. And let's see how they finish. I mean, we still have four games to go. Uh, speaking of games to go, Peyton Manning uh, famously said that he and Marvin Harrison, their 114 touchdowns, was a record he didn't think maybe would ever be broken. Here comes Brady and Gronk together, and they've got 104. A couple more in Atlanta this past week. Uh, Brady and Gronk, do you think of them as one of the better, uh, one of the greatest connections in NFL history, or do they go a little bit underappreciated over time? I think both are true. Right. I, I, yeah, I think I think uh, I think we can look at them as, as one of the greatest combinations. And I think a little bit we don't think of them in those those in that manner because we always think of quarterback receiver. Right. Right. Uh, and, and and Gronk is a tight end and he's a big he's a big tight end. Uh, I don't know that they'll get the Manning's mark. It just depends on how uh, Gronkowski is feeling beyond this year. But he's he's pretty phenomenal. I mean, you know, he's 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 pretty amazing because he, he hey, listen, he's he's not a one way tight end where he's just he's just a receiver. He 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 does his share of blocking. Chris Mortensen is with us uh, at More Report on Twitter. You see him on ESPN. He's on the Pepsi Hotline. Mike McCarthy comes back, and if I read right, declares they are going to win. We assume every head coach feels that way. They don't often say it that way, especially before a big rivalry game. I, I, Jimmy Johnson did it once while he was the Cowboys coach during their their their, their Super Bowl years. And it was before they played the 49ers in, uh, the first time and actually basically said they were going to beat their butts, and they did. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know that this was necessary. You know, right now, Ron Rivera really has kind of had the Cowboys number. Washington football team has done quite well against them. Uh, Cowboys have, listen, just talking to somebody in the league, they said, listen, they're not the same. You know, even the offensive lineman like Tyron Smith, you know, he's he's playing, but he's not the same Tyron Smith because of all the injuries. Ezekiel Elliott, no matter what they say, no matter what Jerry Jones says, he just says, there's no reason to think all of a sudden he's going to be look like himself. And now Tony Pollard, the other running back, has a, a, a plantar fascia injury. If anybody knows that's a oh. serious injury or a tough injury, you can play on it, but it's it's, it's a painful injury. Uh, but I still, you, I, the, the Washington football team is going to have to show me that they, that Taylor Heineke can beat Dak Prescott. Okay. Uh, I, I just have to believe that uh, the Cowboys are going to win this. I believe the Cowboys will win this game, but it's not because Mike McCarthy said they were. Hey, the Carolina Panthers offense, obviously bad, less than 20 points per game. Were you a little surprised though? Joe Brady relieved of his duties midway through his second season. I was not. Then Aaron Rumley's going back to last year, his first season. And they just didn't, uh, it, it wasn't really uh, something that was working well. So they were going to try and make it work, bring, you know, bring on Sam Darnold. And well, they did win the first three games, but it wasn't always because of the offensive output. And, you know, listen, Joe Brady, uh, listen, he might have caught lightning in a bottle. When you think about, you know, before he went to LSU, if you know the story, he was with the Saints as a quality control hadn't really been a coordinator elsewhere for the most part. And the, the LSU coaches wanted to like learn more about the Saints offense. Only Sean Payton, their head coach, or Pete Carmichael, their coordinator, or Joe Lombardi, their quarterback coach, was not available to kind of show them the tape and, and talk them through it. But Joe Brady, the quality control coach, was. And then all of a sudden, you know, they said, well, why don't we just hire him as our co-offensive coordinator with Steve Ensminger? And we know when you have Jamar, uh, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Terrence Marshall and Justin Jefferson and a guy named Clyde edwards alaire I think he caught lightning in a bottle and then he capitalized on it. Uh, and, you know, they, Joe happened to have the same agent as Matt Rule. And it, it didn't work out. So I, I guess what I'm saying, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not surprised. And then I, the next thing is, like, did Joe Brady just – do what exactly what I mentioned at the start. Cat, he caught lightning in a bottle that one year at LSU, and is he as good as we thought he was? 
the 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 NFC both wild card races will be crazy, but this NFC wild card race looks like it's going to be uh, really really crazy. Do you do you like the 49ers where they are right now? What do you expect of San Francisco down the stretch here, and who maybe are some of your favorites to come out of that clumped pack there, maybe to win that wild card? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's the 49ers to me. If they could say how they always seem to have like. I know everybody has injuries. We've just talked about a, a few of them uh, on other teams, but they always seem to get a key injury here, a key injury there. Uh, you know, Kyle Shanahan, you know, when they're running the ball, you know, and, they're, and their, defense, their defense will play better. Those things are married up. People don't ever want to put the two together, but they are, especially with the way Kyle runs the ball and then uses the run action after it. And I mean run action, you know. It, it all looks the same. And, uh, you know, so to me, Jimmy Garoppolo, okay, he can he can make certain plays, but there are some plays he doesn't see, and you can see Kyle Shanahan on an all twenty two video throwing his arms up in the air when he misses a wide open Kyle Uchek, uh thirty yards downfield. Uh, so I, to me, it's like okay, I'm the game I'm anxious to see more than any of them is the Monday night game with the Cardinals and 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 the Rams. I mean that's that's a big game and then uh, we'll, we'll we'll monitor the 49ers uh certainly the, you know they could be that wild card type of team but and if they got in i would and they got in if, they, if the 49ers got in and were healthy i'd say watch out for them but clearly kyle shanahan does not have full confidence in jimmy garoppolo he wouldn't have drafted trey lance when we also know he wanted mac jones uh they wouldn't have drafted trey lance uh if he was happy with jimmy garoppolo it wasn't only about injuries and then, uh, you know, how much will he trust them? Hey, finally, Mort, sticking in the NFC West, the Seattle Seahawks, rumblings are Russell Wilson might be done after this season. Pete Carroll, 70 years old, the oldest coach in the league. Chances both Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll are back in Seattle for 2022. Woo. Boy, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say 50-50. And only, I, I can't tell you which 50% is going to be we heard russell wilson yesterday say he wants to be there for the next 20 years i got news for russell unless he's unless they decide to make him president of the team when he, he he's not going to be tom brady and play and be playing when he's 45 or 50. so last year we really thought that after this year russell wilson would be gone uh they may have made some mistakes and pete carroll has the final say when you trade two first round picks for a box safety like jamal adams that's a mistake and, and, and Pete yesterday, and I, I love Pete. I've known him forever. Uh, you know, he says it was a perfect, perfect trade. No, it's not a perfect trade when you give up two first round picks for a box safety, Jamal Adams, who is a really good football player, maybe a great football player, but it's it's set them back as an organization. So what draft cap, what can they get back in draft capital to rebuild this foundation? Well, it happens to be Russell Wilson is their best asset. And we know what happened last year. So I would say... I, I would say that both can be gone, or I would lean more, uh, you know, to say Russell Wilson, you know, probably would like to play in a in a in a bigger market, you know, where he where he can kind of build, uh, continue to build his, uh, let's say, his uh, marketing ability, and into the next profession that he uh, that he chooses. In this case, he's actually said he that he would like to be an owner or a part owner of a football team. So he's looking for a place where he can keep padding that uh, bank account. That's right. <laughs> yep. Chris Mortensen representing his Arkansas Razorback baseball team with a hat there. The SEC. Ch I assume that's no, what this that is. is. This is the Alabama uh -oh. SEC championship hat from a year ago. From a year ago. This is from a year ago. Yeah, for those that don't yeah, remember, fact, uh, Chris's son Alex is still part of the staff there, yeah. Yeah, it was, he's their lead offensive analyst. He's been that uh, throughout this. So actually after, uh, this is from last year, and uh, after that Auburn game, which as you know, was a nail biter, it was worse than that if you were, uh, you know, got some invested. And I just, I, I texted him and said, daddy wants a new SEC championship cap. <laughs> and all, all I can tell you is I'm going to get one. He's That's gonna right. Go. Yes. Hey, hey, he's doing a really good job with their quarterback over there. Uh, hats off to him as an offensive <laughs> analyst. Your, your son's got talents. He's doing a great job with that quarterback. <laughs> well, uh, it was good to have uh, talent to work with, but I know that Jalen Hurts and Tua and, and Mac Jones and, and, and now Bryce are all fond of him, but you know, let's, let's all, 
Remember, Nick Saban is still the man, and, <laughs> and Bill O'Brien's done a good job this year adjusting to this. He really has. Uh, Mort, thank you so much for the time. It's always you, a pleasure to talk with you. All right, guys. It was nice to see you this time. That's right. I know. Yeah, Good to I see know. you. Yes. Yeah, it looks great. We'll, we'll do it again this way. How about that? I love it. All, All right, right, guys. Take care. Have a good weekend.